want me to go first? <clears throat> What's that? Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, I would like to go first, um, just in case either of us goes long. I may have to duck out a little after one to uh, run my wife over to pick up a car from the garage. Okay, I was thinking the same thing, so let's keep it keep it moving. All right. You know what, Doug? If like if we decide to, you could always go next week. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and. Uh, I don't think what I have to talk about will take a long time. Um, okay. So uh, what's interesting to me is like, um, like every single project, of course, wrestles with time zones. And I made a joke on Twitter about it the other day that the two, pro the two branches you should always start your project with are main and bug fix slash time zone. But um, so uh, like every other project, we were running into time zone issues. And um, I looked at kind of what we'd done for time zones uh, on freight and uh, looked at and Al, to their credit, actually uh, dove in and, and dealt with that there. And um, basically the way we approached it there was grabbing the time zone from the browser because it seems like that is the source of truth for the user's time zone and sending it up to the server um, through live view and that works just fine. Um, we weren't really doing much. We've, we were doing a little bit with live view, but not a lot. Uh, so I took an initial whack at this and I'm gonna, I'm showing the wrong thing on my screen. What, what, uh, what we basically started with, uh, and then I'll talk about where I got to. Uh, we started with um, using a date time picker and uh, on the browser, the component that uh, is um, kind of built into most browsers is called date time local. And uh, as the name implies, it lets you pick a date and a time, but it is in local, meaning untime zone specified uh, format. Uh, and so that really doesn't do us much good on the server where uh, we have decided that we want to store things uh, in UTC format. Um, so um, basically kind of what we're, um, what we're planning to do, and I feel like is a reasonably decent practice is um, store the dates UTC and display them in whatever um, time zone the user is in. So basically the idea is time zone, uh, well, time in general is of course based on frame of reference and Danny could explain further, but he's not here right now. Um, and uh, so what that meant was if we just have the local time, we need to send up the time zone as well. My first approach was, I know, I'll make a little tiny uh, custom element that uh, is a hidden, that basically builds a hidden input that grabs the time zone from the browser so that I'll send it up and have it there. And that worked out okay. But that meant on the server, I then got a local time and a time zone as two separate pieces. And on the server, I'd put them together so that I could persist the time as UTC. Uh, I then realized uh, after building that and getting it working that there was an even simpler approach. And in hindsight, it seems so simple and obvious that I'm thinking, uh, Maybe there's a hole in this approach, or if not, I'm just surprised somebody else, like we aren't already kind of doing this. But anyway, uh, I'll let you guys find the holes in my approach uh, if, you, if you can can see some that are obvious. Um, so what I did was uh, instead of that approach that I was just describing, I made a single date time input custom element that just builds a date time local that the user interacts with, but then has a hidden that builds the whole date as UTC. Uh, when I'm displaying a date, I have a companion element that gets a UTC date and just displays it in the user's time zone. Because the user time zone is something that you can get from the browser. Essentially what this means is 
when we're interacting with the server, it's always UTC. When we're displaying it in the browser, whether it's uh, picking one or displaying one, it's just always local time. Um, the trick there is you're letting the browser do the time conversion. We are indeed. <clears throat> it seems like that's the best place to do it um, because now we have this, I don't know how recent it is, but I'll show you what the, the standard browser API for getting the time zone is. Um, so what we have here is this date time input. Let me show you that first, because that's kind of a more interesting one, although it's not terribly interesting. Um, I am using um, lit element, which is a library um, that makes building custom elements a little easier than it might otherwise be. I'm using date FNs um, and specifically like a time zone flavor. So I have some handy functions so I can go from uh, zone time to UTC and back again. And this custom element, I'm saying I have two different properties. I have a name, which is just going to be the, uh, the name of the input that it actually sends up to the server. And then I have an internal property that's the UTC date time. That's just the value that's going to be populated into that input. Um, so in the rendering, uh, I'm rendering two inputs. I'm rendering a input of type date time local, and that's what the user actually sees and interacts with. And then this is an event binding that basically just listens to the input event, which happens when you interact with the thing and fires this input change. This input change just grabs the local, the, the date in the local format that comes out of date time local. And then it calls the zone time UTC that takes that local date and calls this whole mess, which is just getting the browser's time zone. And then the results, of course, is I have a UTC date time. And all I do is just cram it in that hidden input. And what that means is <clears throat> the server side code for uh, this is creating an appointment. And the appointment controller update is just standard Phoenix code. I'm sorry, I'm creating an appointment. I'm not updating an appointment. My bad. For creating an appointment, I'm just grabbing the appointment params. And all that does is just the out of the box change set. And all it's doing is a cast because it's getting the start set as a UTC date time. So <clears throat> that's the um, input side of it. Um, just to kind of show you what it looks like. This is the actual UI. And this is that custom element. If you look, it's basically, um, I'm, I'm using a custom element, but I'm not using the shadow DOM. So basically it's just building these inputs right here in the HTML inside of it. <laughs> So if I pick a time in the future for the appointment, we'll do this like that. I can show that it's basically rounding off to the hour in the display here of the appointment. Um, to actually display these dates because of course they are stored in UTC and they're sent over um, 
from Elixir is UTC. Let's go look at um, the view that we're seeing here for showing appointments. Um, that is on the age dashboard. And here's where we're looping over the upcoming appointments. And we're using this time output element, which takes the date time from Elixir and lets you specify a format, which um, it's kind of like if you've ever seen stir up time, it basically gives you little characters or it gives you letters to represent the format. So this is basically saying a single hour rounded and then AM, PM. Um, I'm not going to go and I, I can refer to the documentation for what that format specifier is. But if you do something like stir up time, Elixir kind of does the same thing. You have a bunch of ways to specify the time output format. Um, time output is another custom element. And it's also a really, I think, pretty simple. Uh, it has two properties, the date, time, and the format. And it parses the date time as an ISO formatted string into an actual date object. And it calls date FNs um, to format the date using the format specified. So does the date string that you have there, does it specify that it's UTC and parse ISO knows how to convert that to local time zone? Our ISO is not converting it to local time zone. Uh, this format thing is, I believe. Um, well, I, ISO is always UTC. So that string is going to have a Z at the end for Zulu for the time zone. Gotcha. And that's just a date instance. And format knows how to display date instances. In local time. However, I mean, it's just a JavaScript date object. Um, I don't know. There is. Is, is it's that gonna part of that it's always, If you make a new date in the console, it's always going to display it in the browser's local time. What were you saying, John? Oh, okay. So that, that's just the default. It's not part of the format that you're sending in. That HAAA isn't saying like local time with our AM, PM. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't even, I didn't even think too hard about like when it's in local format here. I just kind of, I wrote a test and wrote this code and it just worked the first time. <laughs> so it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, it's, but it's what it's doing under the covers, I know yeah. par size ISO format is always Zulu. And this is just a plain old date object, JavaScript date. And format is like from date fun, function, functions and it knows how to format dates. So that, that lit element library that you're using. Yep. How, how does that work exactly? Because I, I know sure. that. That's one of the things that like, so you're, you're basically by doing this, you're getting rid of the need for Timex, which is awesome. But I think I am. Yeah. Yeah. So Timex, it we, always we has that thing Timex. where it downloads the latest time zone data to try it because it's constantly changing. So how does lit element keep up to date with that? Lit, lit element isn't doing that. Lit element is what he's using instead of react. Yeah, right. he's little, building. He's yeah. building. Components oh, I'm sorry. Date it. date funds or the date fund functions. I don't think it's doing it either. I think that's up to the browser. Right. So so, the browser always knows based on the local time how much to differentiate that from UTC. Like the browser is always just aware of that, and it's constantly getting updated all the time. I Presumably guess theoretically. Okay, cool. I love that. I love getting away from Timex and having that stupid time zone data file being dumped down nightly. 
yeah, assuming I mean, that the user have... keeps their browser updated, right? You know, if their time zones change out from underneath them. That's on them, it, though. It's on them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm basically trying to make this, like, not my problem anymore. <laughs> it feels like I have. And I guess my question is, like, did I actually get away with it? Or am I missing something really obvious? I mean, I think it works great for a browser. It's just um, if you ever have APIs and stuff, that's where you're going to have a problem. If, yeah. if, if you're trying to respond to like local times and API responses, then you're going to have to bring Timex back in. But yeah, if it's an API, you wouldn't have to do that either. You would just send it to them in Zulu and still make it their problem. That's well, right. no, but like if they're sending to you in, in local time. Creation, it's good enough for me. Yeah. Zulu is all you get ever, period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could definitely make that. I'd be like, you can't send me anything but UTC. And then you'd be fine. That's what yeah. I uh, and this is kind of like under the covers, it, it, it's kind of an API. I mean, it's like, you know, you send to, to my back end, which is the, mm -hmm. the Phoenix app, you can For sure. send and receive Zulu. That's all. That's all. Yeah. That's awesome. I dig it. I do we want to dive. Do we want to talk any more about this or do you want to talk about TS vectors? Um, I don't know that unless anybody has any questions. Um, did you did you have questions about how, how lit element is is working, John? That I could cover real quick. Uh, lit element, no. It was the the date date functions okay. uh, library is what I was really kind of trying to get at, and I was just trying to. The only other thing I was trying to think about is like, is there any way that I could do this without using JavaScript? <laughs> but but yeah. yeah. So I, and um, I have, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm basically taking the idea of like, I don't think it's JavaScript that makes us hate front end development. I think it's complexity. I think it's shared state. Yeah. <clears throat> if you don't, if you're not sharing state, like for me on GIS, and this is another subject. I have this massive Redux database that I have to keep in sync. And I have all these components that have to have shared state between them. And it's all terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, when my Elixir talk comes up, basically my, my Ohio Elixir talk was on this topic exactly. So it might be worth watching and see if that's interesting. But that's a, definitely another topic, which is yeah. what if you move state to the server? Does that make <laughs> you know, having a front end app, not complicated anymore. Yeah. But I don't want to dive into that now. Yeah, um, so awesome. yeah, that's really all I had here. I just, it, it seems to me like, I guess my, yeah, the thing that, that feels weird, like, it seems like this is such a simple idea. Somebody else would have thought of it and, or there, there must be some hole in it is just what I keep thinking, but. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love it. Cool. Well, that's all I got. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all there is to that.